Hello and welcome once again to the Akash Baiju's J channel. My name is Atiullah and we are live with the Rankers Batch 2023. So if you want to be a ranker in J Main and Advanced 2023, then this is the place to be. All right, guys, a very warm welcome to all of you. This is the Rankers Batch 2023. We are preparing you for J Main and J Advanced. Okay, so we do start from the basics, but we go up till J main and J advanced level and even a little beyond. Okay, so that you don't face any problem. You are not afraid of the examination anymore. And my objective is to make you feel confident about the exam because we are solving a lot of good questions. We are solving very good conceptual questions which are going to help you in your exam. Okay, so people are joining in already. Sumit, hello, how are you? Manab, how are you? A very warm welcome. And on agenda today is relative motion. Okay, this is going to be lecture one of relative motion. And we are going to deal with relative motion in 1D and 2D. Now, there are three important points why we should study relative motion. Number one, it is J one of favorite topics. J is one of favorite topics. If you look at previous year papers, there are a lot of questions asked on relative motion. The second point why we should study relative motion because some very beautiful concepts, some very beautiful questions can be framed on relative motion. And the third and the most important thing is that if you are able to use relative motion very well, you can solve question in a much less time. You can solve questions with lesser effort. And that is what I'm going to show you in this session. Okay, so shorts have also joined us. Hello shorts. How are you? All right. Chalo, if you are guys are ready, chalo quickly give me a thumbs up. And so that we can get started with this session, it's going to be a very important session because we are dealing with relative motion. It is important in all aspects. Okay. Before we move forward, just a few announcements. You might have heard of Ante. So if you know any way, anyone between class 7th and 12th, so ask them, share this link, ask them to uh, go for the Anthe examination. And if they do very well in this examination, there are a lot of rewards that can be won. Okay, so guys, are you all set all ready to go ahead with this session? Quickly give me a thumbs up so that we can start. Okay, and also people uh, who have not subscribed to this channel, I ask you to subscribe to this channel. I want you to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the lectures, you don't miss notifications, because this is a series of lectures that we are doing. These are not standalone lectures. These are like classroom lectures. So if you want miss one lecture, you might have trouble in the next lecture. Okay, so I want you guys to attend all the lectures. And for that, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like what we are doing, if it is going to be helpful for you, then please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends as well. Okay, so Sumit has given me a thumbs up. Nikita has joined us as well. All right, perfect guys, we are going to roll now and we are going to start with relative motion in one dimension. So first we're going to deal with relative motion in one dimension. And then we are going to expand that concept into t dimension, two dimension as well. Okay, so what is the situation here? Let's say there's a particle A and there's a particle B. Now this is, let's say, ground frame of reference, or this is some other frame of reference, some common frame of reference, okay? For that frame of reference, this is the origin. And we are only talking about 1D, so the particle can either move towards the positive x-axis or it can move towards the negative x-axis, okay? Now what is happening over here? Particle A has a velocity VA, it has an acceleration AA, and it is at a position of XA. Similarly, particle B has a velocity VB, it has position XB and it has an acceleration of AB. Now what we want to do is we want to change the frame of reference. What does it mean to change the frame of reference? Let's say we want to look or we want to observe motion from the frame of reference of A. Then what are we going to do? We are going to give A a camera and A is going to hold that camera. And whatever is seen from that camera is going to be our observation. Okay, this is the meaning of observing from A, observing from the point of view of A, observing from the frame of A. So what are we going to do? We're going to give A a camera. A is going to hold this camera and whatever is the feed coming from the camera, whatever is the camera showing, that is going to be our observation. 
So obviously things are not now going to change a little bit. Now what would you observe? Now from this frame of reference, what the camera is showing you, would you say that A is moving or A is at rest? For example, I am A and this pen is my camera. I am holding this camera. Now even when I am moving, look at me, even when I am moving, can you say that I am moving with respect to this pen or camera? Now with respect to this pen or camera, my position does not change which means the person from whose reference you are looking at things that is going to be at rest. Yes. So this is going to become the new point of rest. This is going to become the new frame of reference and everything is going to be measured from this new frame of reference. And if this is the new frame of reference, everything will have to be recalibrated, right? So the position of B is going to be different with respect to A. We're going to call it X B A. What does it mean? The position of X B with respect to A. The velocity of B is also going to change in this frame of reference. And we are going to call it V B A. The velocity of B with respect to A. And similarly, the acceleration is also going to change. So if we are getting into the frame of reference of A, then we will have to recalibrate all the parameters and the position of A will become the new point of rest or the new reference frame. Is that correct? Now how to deal with these things? Very simple. How do we define relative position? The relative position of B with respect to A is simply defined as the relative position of B minus the relative position of A. Very simple. But something is hidden over here. It is not written but it is hidden over here. What is that? That if we are writing XBA is equal to XB minus XA, then the position of B and the position of A has to be taken from a common reference frame. So the thing which is hidden here is, is the common frame of reference. Okay. Now if you calculate the position of B with respect to C, but you calculate the position of A with some other frame of reference, then you cannot use XBA is equal to XB minus XA. Okay. Both the positions of B and A have to be from the common frame of reference and generally that common frame of reference is ground but it can be different as well. But the important thing is that the position of both B and A have to be measured from a common frame of reference. Is that correct? That is not generally written but it is implicit in this equation. Is that correct? Okay. Now from here it becomes very simple. If you differentiate on both sides, you will see that the velocity of B with respect to A is equal to velocity of B minus velocity of A. Again, the velocities have to be measured from a common frame of reference. And if you differentiate again, then the acceleration of B with respect to A is going to be acceleration of B minus acceleration of A again with respect to a common frame of reference. Do not forget that. Okay. So what is the summary of all this? How are we going to deal with relative motion? Very simple. The position of A with respect to A or the velocity of A with respect to A or the acceleration of A with respect to A is going to be zero. My velocity with, my, with respect to me is going to be zero. My acceleration with respect to me is going to be zero. Is that correct? Also, the velocity of A with respect to B is going to be equal to the negative of velocity with of B with respect to A. That's very simple. Okay. The velocity of A with respect to B will be the negative of the velocity of B with respect to A. Okay. For example, you are looking at me. Now, if I'm coming in the front, okay, I'm here, I'm walking towards you. If I'm walking towards you, how do you see my velocity? Okay, how do you see my velocity? You see my velocity towards you, don't you? Okay, so you are seeing my velocity towards you. The same motion, what am I observing? If I am moving forward, I am observing that the camera is coming towards me. Is that correct? Okay, so the velocity of A with respect to B is going to be the opposite of or the negative of the velocity of B with respect to A. And also, this is something we have already discussed that the velocity of A with respect to B will be equal to the velocity of A with respect to a common frame. That common frame in general can be ground. So the velocity of A with respect to 
g minus the velocity of b with respect to g is that correct now there is another way of writing this equation and that is very very important what is that i can say that the velocity of a with respect to g is going to be equal to the velocity of a with respect to b plus the velocity of b with respect to g okay what i've done is i've just taken this velocity of b with respect to ground and i have shifted it to the lhs is that correct okay so velocity of a with respect to ground will be equal to the velocity of a with respect to b plus velocity of b with respect to ground okay that is very easy to understand and that is very easy to visualize suppose there is a stunt going on on a train okay this is a train this is a moving train and a stunt is going on okay the stunt man is on the roof so what the stunt man is doing is the stunt man is running on the train okay the stunt man is running on the train so we can say that it has some velocity let's say it's the stunt man which is s and it has some velocity with respect to the train what does it mean if the train was stationary if the train was stationary the stunt man will have some velocity with respect to the stationary train okay so that is the velocity of the stunt man with respect to the train he is running on the train okay so he is jumping from one bogey to the other which means that with respect to the train he is moving he has a velocity and then the velocity of train with respect to ground is also going to be there the train is itself going to move also okay so what would you observe with respect to ground with a person who is standing on the ground what are you going to see what is that person going to see that person is going to see that this person is running faster this person is running faster compared to if he were there stationary on the train if a person is stationary on the train versus if a person is running on the train who would be running faster this person would be running faster okay so what can we say we can say that if we have to find the velocity of the stunt man with respect to the ground we can say that this is going to be equal to the velocity of the stunt man with respect to the train plus the velocity of the train with respect to the ground and we are going to use it again and again and again and this is very important and that is why we are written that here the common frame is ground okay here the common frame is ground but it's not necessary okay p and c could be other common frames and in that case velocity of a with respect to b will be equal to the velocity of a with respect to p plus velocity of p with respect to b and similarly for c as well is that correct okay so this is how we deal with relative motion in one dimension not just one dimension in two dimension and three dimension also the concept is exactly going to be the same so this equation over here and the modification of that equation over here are both very very important is that correct okay um, manrapu is asking sir i am also taking subscription of byju's uh, sir come before january session theek hai manrapu uh, i am talking about the youtube sessions so by december or mid january we will try to cover 75 to 80% of the syllabus okay now this exam that you are going to appear for in january most likely is going to be the first phase of je main there is going to be another phase probably in april okay so if you are prepared with 75 to 80% of your syllabus if that is the completion rate and if you have solved everything if you have studied well if you have practiced it does not matter how much syllabus you have covered notionally it matters how much you have practiced so if you have practiced well then even in the first je main you are going to do well so our job would be or our objective would be to cover 75 to 80% of the syllabus till your first je main and after that you're again going to appear for je main and after the first je main we are going to cover the syllabus we are going to have some rapid fire sessions we are going to have some extra sessions we are going to have some focus sessions some marathon sessions that are going to help you there as well okay so completing 100% syllabus for je main is not really that important okay what is important is that whatever we are covering that is covered well okay so manab is saying sir first cover 11 then 12 manab everything is being done parallelly so on wednesday and friday we have sessions which covers 11th and on thursday and tuesday we have sessions which are covering 12th 
सो बोथ आर बींग कवर्ड पैरलली इज दैट करेक्ट ओके दोनों को कवर करना इंपॉर्टेंट है चलो सो इफ दिस इज क्लियर इफ दिस इज एब्सोल्युटली क्लियर क्विकली गिव मी अ थम्स अप एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू गो फॉरवर्ड ओके व्हाट्स नेक्स्ट व्हाट इंपैक्ट इज गोइंग टू हैव ऑन इक्वेशंस ऑफ मोशन व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रिलेटिव मोशन ठीक है नाउ अगेन द कंडीशन द अंडरलाइन कंडीशन इज दैट द एक्सेलरेशन इज कांस्टेंट वी आर वर्किंग अंडर दैट अजम्पशन दैट द एक्सेलरेशन इज कांस्टेंट ओके सो वी कैन से दैट let's say there's a particle 1 so the velocity of 1 will be equal to u1 plus a1 into t this is one of the equations of motion and let's say there is another particle what is that another particle let's say that's 2 so the velocity of 2 is going to be u2 plus a2 t now let's say we subtract these two equations okay let's say this is equation number 2 let's say this is equation number 1 so we are subtracting equation 1 from equation 2 and if we are doing that what do we get we get v2 minus 1 v1 is equal to u2 minus u1 plus a2 minus a1 multiplied by t do you get this okay now what is v2 minus v1 can we say that the this, this is the velocity of 2 with respect to 1 what is u2 minus u1 can we say that this is the velocity of 2 with respect to 1 the initial velocity of 2 with respect to 1 and what is a2 minus a1 this is the acceleration of 2 with respect to 1 multiplied by t so all we have done is that the equation of motion is going to remain the same but it is going to be relative in nature okay so instead of writing the velocity we are going to write the relative velocity instead of the acceleration we are going to write the relative acceleration instead of displacement we are going to write relative displacement and that is going to take care of the relative motion equation is that correct okay so i showed it to you for first equation now you can apply that for other equations and this is what you are going to get is that correct okay so this is in vector form you can write it in 1d like this v12 will be equal to u12 plus a12 multiplied by t s12 will be equal to u12 into t plus half a12 into t square this is how we are going to use these equations in one dimension and then we'll have v12 square is equal to u12 square plus 2 a12 into s12 so you see that the equations of motion do not change but all we have to do is we have to just substitute or we have to replace the parameters with relative parameters is that correct chalo so now this is the basic concept and let's go for a concept check post so that we see that we understand this concept or not okay so let's try to solve this question what is the question a person walks up a stationary escalator in t1 second they get the escalator is stationary on an escalator which is stationary the person is able to walk in time t1 now if he remains stationary on the escalator then it can take him up in time t2 second okay now what the person is doing is he is stationary on the elevator he is not moving on the elevator but the elevator is moving and the elevator is taking him up in time t2 second now if the length of the escalator is l then what are the things we have to determine we have to find out what is the speed of the man with respect to the escalator what is the speed of the escalator and how much time would it take him to walk up the moving escalator is the question clear guys okay this is a very common thing we are all have used escalators so you know that generally what we do is we don't move on the escalator okay we just stand on the escalator and the escalator the job is the of the escalator is to take us up or down okay but sometimes we are in hurry okay so we start running on the escalator as well why because we want to reach there faster okay so that's the hint for you now i want to know from you guys that what will be the answer to option 1 let's talk about what will be the speed of the man with respect to the escalator okay can you tell me can you figure this out what will be the speed of the man with respect to the elevator manrapu is asking first from which you will start so manrapu both 11th and class 12 syllabus are going on parallelly okay so we have started with kinematics 
we have started with kinematics and then we are going to finish the entire mechanics one portion kinematics and laws of motion then friction then circular motion then uh, work power energy etc okay so this is going on in class 11th what is going on in class 12th in class 12th electrostatics is going on so after electrostatics you'll have uh, capacitors and current electricity then you'll have magnetism and then so on so we are going in sequence and parallelly 11th and 12th syllabus are being covered Sumit is saying zero. Why Sumit? Why do you think the velocity is zero? What is the speed of the man with respect to the escalator? Why do you think it's zero? Okay, read the question again. Don't rush to the solution. Read the question again. The person walks up a stationary escalator in T1 second. Now the escalator is stationary. Let's say this is the escalator. The escalator has a length L. Okay. Now this man is moving up the escalator in time t1, okay? The escalator is stationary, but the man is moving on the escalator. So when the escalator is stationary, what is it? It's simply a staircase. So you are moving up a staircase. So if you're moving up a staircase, how can we see that the velocity of this man is zero? It cannot be zero, okay? Now understand this very well. Now, whenever we say that the velocity with respect to still something, then it is the relative velocity with that something. Okay, let me try to explain this again. When we are saying that velocity of the boat with respect to still water, when we are talking about the velocity of the boat with respect to still water, what are we referring to? We are referring to the velocity of the boat with respect to water. When we are saying speed of the aeroplane or velocity of the aeroplane with respect to still air, what are we referring to? We are referring to the velocity of the aeroplane with respect to air. Here when we are saying the velocity of the man with respect to still elevator or with respect to stationary elevator, what are we referring to? We are referring to the velocity of the man with respect to the escalator. Is that correct? So if I have to write the velo relative velocity relationship, what am I going to write? I'm going to write that the velocity of the man with respect to the escalator. What is ME? M is man, E is escalator. So the velocity of the man with respect to the escalator will be equal to the velocity of the man, sorry, the velocity of the man with respect to ground. Okay, I'm talking about the velocity of the man with respect to ground. Now this will be equal to the velocity of the man with respect to the escalator plus the velocity of escalator with respect to the crown. Is this the correct relationship? Titanium is saying math lecture just ended now. All right, no worries escalator. We have just started. This is the first question. Don't worry about it. Continue with the session. Look at the question and try to solve it. So Ajit has also joined it. Hi Ajit. Okay, look at the question and start solving it. All right, so what are we talking about? The velocity of the man with respect to ground will be equal to the velocity of man with respect to escalator plus the velocity of escalator with respect to ground. Okay. Now, what does it mean? Now, if the escalator were stationary, listen to this very carefully. Listen to this very carefully. If the escalator were stationary, then velocity of escalator with respect to the ground is going to be zero. In that case, the velocity of man with respect to the ground will be the same as the velocity of man with respect to the escalator. Is that correct? Okay. Now, in this situation, the escalator is stationary. So, what is the distance the man is covering? The distance the man is covering is L. And how much time it is covering? It is covering in time T1. Which means I can say that the velocity of man with respect to the ground in this case is the same as the velocity of man with respect to the escalator. So what is the velocity of man with respect to escalator? It is L divided by T1. Do you agree? Okay, he has gone a distance L and then you divide it by time T1, you are going to get the velocity. Now because the escalator was stationary, the velocity of man with respect to the ground was equal to the velocity of man with respect to the escalator, which means that the velocity of man with respect to escalator is how much? It is L upon T1. And that's exactly what I was emphasizing on. 
whenever we say that the velocity of man with respect to still escalator we are saying velocity of the man with respect to the escalator velocity of boat with respect to still water we are saying velocity of the boat with respect to water and when we are saying velocity of the aeroplane with respect to still air we are saying velocity of the aeroplane with respect to air is that correct okay so that is the language you need to understand okay now in this case now in this case if the velocity of the escalator with the ground was not zero let's say this quantity here was not zero in this case would the velocity of man with respect to the ground be l upon t1 no it is going to be greater than that or smaller than that depending on whether the man is going up or down is that correct or the escalator is going up or down okay so in this case the velocity of the man with respect to the ground is going to be different from velocity of man with respect to the escalator if the escalator was moving okay so this l with respect to t1 i'm sorry this l divided by t1 what is this velocity this velocity is velocity of the man with respect to escalator is that clear whenever we are saying that the velocity of something with respect to still something okay velocity of a with respect to still b then we are saying the velocity of a with respect to b now here the stationary escalator was there so we are saying that on a stationary ele elevator escalator the man took time t1 and he covered a distance l which means this is the velocity of the man with respect to the escalator so that is going to be l upon t1 is that correct is this absolutely clear if this is clear quickly give me a thumbs up quickly let me know that this is clear to you okay so we have figured out what is the velocity of the man with respect to the escalator and that is l divided by t1 okay now let's talk about the speed of the escalator now the escalator if the man is stationary if the man is stationary the escalator takes him up in t2 second which means the escalator is moving and the escalator is going to move with some speed okay so the escalator is like this i'm not making it like a staircase okay don't worry about that but if the man is over here the man is not moving the man is chilling the man is standing he is not going to make any effort okay so the man would be taken up by the escalator okay so the man is going to reach the top of the escalator so how much distance has been covered by the escalator so if we take this point this point has reached this point which means that the escalator has gone up by l and what was the time taken the time taken was t2 which means that the velocity of the escalator with respect to ground is going to be how much it is going to be l divided by t2 is that correct if this is clear if this is clear quickly give me a thumbs up so that now we can go to option c what are we talking about how much time would it take for him to walk up the moving escalator okay so as i said sometimes we are in a hurry okay sometimes we are in a hurry and we want to quickly reach to the top okay we want to quickly reach the top in that case what do we do we start running on the escalator okay we start running on the escalator so here what are we going to use we are going to use the relative velocity relationship very simple the velocity of the man with respect to the ground okay for someone standing on the ground the man has reached to the top is that correct for someone standing on the ground the man has reached to the top now the velocity of the man with respect to the ground will be equal to the velocity of the man with respect to the escalator plus velocity of the escalator with respect to the ground okay this is the relative velocity relationship so what is this going to be velocity of man with respect to the escalator is how much it is l divided by t1 what is the velocity of escalator with respect to the ground that is l divided by t2 okay so what is this this is the velocity of the man with respect to the ground so how much time is he going to take he is going to take what is the distance covered the distance covered by the man is how much it is l with respect to the ground the distance covered by the man with respect to the ground is how much it is l and that has to be divided by the velocity of man with respect to the ground which is l upon t1 plus l upon t2 okay and if you calculate this what are you going to get okay if you calculate this what are you going to get l is going to get cancelled and we'll have t1 t2 divided by 
T1 plus T2 and that is going to be our answer. Is that clear? All right, is this question clear? Is the basic concept of relative motion clear to everyone? If this is clear to everyone, quickly give me a thumbs up and then we are going to go to the next problem. Okay, what is the most important takeaway? The most important takeaway is that when it is mentioned, the language of the question, we have to look at the language of the question. If A has certain velocity with respect to still something, if A has a velocity with respect to still something, that still something could be an escalator, that still something could be a river or a stream, that still something could be air, then we are talking about the velocity of A with respect to that still something. Is that clear? The language might get a little tricky, but that is what it means. Is that clear? Okay, perfect. Perfect. So now let's go and solve another question. Okay, what is the situation? The situation is that there are two cars, one and two, which are moving with velocities u1 and u2 respectively on a straight road in the same direction. Now when the cars are separated by a distance d, the driver of car 1 applies brakes and the car moves with uniform retardation a1. Simultaneously, car 2 starts accelerating with a2. If u1 is greater than u2, find the minimum initial separation between the cars to avoid collision between them. Okay? Read the question carefully and then tell me how should we approach this problem. Okay, so you are in a car, okay, you are moving quite fast. Okay, you are moving quite fast and you see that there is a car in front of you and if you keep your velocity like this, then obviously you are going to hit the car. So what are you going to do? You are going to slow down. Okay, you're going to slow down. So, okay, so you are going, you feel that you're going to have a collision with the car in front of you, you're going to slow down. Okay, so, but if you slow down, you're not going to come abruptly at rest. You will take some time to come to rest. You will move some distance forward before you come to rest. Correct. But what is happening? The car in front of you is also accelerating. So someone is, so the driver in the car in the front is also looking at the rear view mirror and he's saying that, okay, this guy is coming at a very great speed. Okay, you're coming at a very high speed. So he has to save himself. So he starts accelerating and going forward. Do you see that? The car in the front sees you and starts accelerating. You in the back see that you're going to hit the car. So you start decelerating. Okay. Now, you're not going to stop abruptly. There's going to be some distance before which you're going to stop. Correct? So what is that safe distance? What should be the initial separation between the two cars to avoid the collision between them? Is this question absolutely clear? Okay? So what we're going to do is, first we're going to solve it in the ground frame. So we are going to observe everything in the ground frame. We're going to solve it in the ground frame and then we'll solve it in the relative motion frame. Okay? Because until you don't know that what you're dealing with in the ground frame, you will not be able to appreciate why you should learn relative motion. Okay? So first we're going to solve it in the ground frame. So very simple situation. Okay? This car has a velocity u1, this car has a velocity u2. D is the initial separation between them. This car is moving with an acceleration a2 and car 1 is moving with a deceleration of a1. So A1 will be in the opposite direction. Now here, the most important thing is the sign convention. If you screw up the sign convention, you are not going to solve this relative motion. Relative motion is going to become very difficult if you screw up the sign convention. The sign convention is the single most important thing in relative motion because that is the cause of a lot of errors. That causes so many errors. Okay? So car 1 is decelerating, it is retarding, it has hit the brakes. So what will happen? Its acceleration would be in the opposite direction, Baba. Correct? Okay? So what are we going to do? We are going to take the rightward direction as positive or the forward direction as positive. You can do it differently also, but we are going to do this. Okay? Chal. Then what happens? Then after some time, what is going to happen? The car 1, if it has to safely it has to avoid collision then that it at this point okay then at this point okay car 1 has just reached the rear of car 2 at this point okay what should happen i'm going to come to that okay but this is the final situation 
Now let's say S1 is the distance traveled or the displacement of car 1 and S2 is the displacement of the green car. Okay, that is the displacement of car 2. Is that correct? Okay. Now my question to you is, okay, titanium is saying safe distances. You're absolutely right, titanium. Very good. The answer is absolutely correct. Okay, did you use ground frame or did you use relative frame? First answer that and also answer this. Everyone answer this. Now, in order to avoid collision, what should be the velocity of car one? What should be the final velocity of car one? In order to, titanium is saying relative frame, excellent titanium, very good. Okay, we are also going to solve it the relative frame, but we should solve from the ground frame as well so that we have a comparison that what is different in the relative frame. Chalo guys, everyone, answer this. This is the critical question. Velocity of one, the final velocity of the one, when the first car has just reached the bonnet of the second, I'm sorry, the rear of the second car. In that case, what should be the velocity of the first car? Quickly tell me, what should be the velocity of the first car in order to avoid collision? Quickly tell me. Are you understanding the question? Okay. The question, I'm repeating the question again. What should be the velocity of car one in order to avoid collision? Zero. Manav is saying zero. Okay. Give me more answers. Think about it. Think about it. Chalo, I'm going to give you a hint. This car is also going to have some velocity or not? U1 minus U2. Nay, 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 titanium. I'm talking about the final position. See, okay, I'm talking about the final position here. Here. See, car 2 is going to have some velocity V2. Okay, car 2 is going to have some velocity V2. What should be the velocity V1? Okay, what should be the velocity V1 so that there is no collision? And remember, guys, we are solving this from the ground frame. Relative frame may be nay guy. We are we are going to go into the relative frame. Don't worry. But pele basic to karo. Pele basic ground frame me to karo. Okay. Manab is saying zero. Titanium is saying zero. Sarla is saying zero. Pir se socho, Baba. Pir se socho. I'm giving you time again. Now this car two, is it at rest? Na Baba. Car two is moving with some velocity, na? Car two is moving with velocity V2. If car one does not have to collide with car two, then what should be the velocity of car one in the ground frame? I'm talking about the ground frame, titanium. Socho Baba, V1 is equal to V2. Ha, that's the correct answer. Socho, think about it. Now car two is not at rest. Samaj mein aari baat? Agar car two rest pe hota, to car one ko bhi rest pe aana padta, collision avoid karne ke liye. But let's say V1 is equal to V2. Both the cars are moving with the same velocity. Have they avoided collision? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Car 1 was moving slowly. Car 2 was moving fast. When they reach this point, chalo, side view dikha tau. When they reach, oh, I have to go ask them somewhere out. When they reach this point, when they are very close together, if both are moving with the same velocity, is collision going to happen? Think about it. If both are going with the same velocity, is collision going to happen? No, collision is not going to happen. Samaj lo, road pe tum ja rahe ho and everyone is going with the same velocity. Will collision happen? No, collision will not happen. So velocity should not be zero with respect to the ground. The velocity of one should be equal to velocity of two in order to avoid collision. And that is what I was asking from the ground frame. Sarla is saying, yes, sir, V1 is equal to V2. Good. Manab, I also try to say this. Ha, Manab, relative velocity will be zero. Yes, that is the correct answer. But abhi relative frame am gaye nahi. Am kaha hai? Am ground frame mein. Correct? We are in the ground frame. Which means that the final velocities should become equal. In that case, the collision will be avoided. Okay. So what are the equations we can write? So for car 2, what is the equation we can write? We can say that S2 will be equal to U2T. And what is the acceleration? The acceleration is A2. What is the direction of acceleration? It is in the forward direction, which means plus half A2 into T square. Is that correct? Okay. This is the equation we can write for car 2. 
what is the equation we can write for car 1? S1 will be equal to U1T. Now, what is the acceleration of car 1? Ulta hai. It is in the opposite direction. So, this is going to become minus half A1 into T square. And obviously, time taken by both the cars is going to be the same. Now, what is the relationship between S1 and S2? Quickly tell me. What is the relationship between S1 and S2? Can you check in the diagram and tell me what is the relationship between S1 and S2? So, you can see that S1 minus S2 is going to be equal to D. Can you see that? Yes, very good. S1 minus S2 will be equal to D. So, what we can do is we can subtract the equations. Okay. So, we can subtract and find out S1 minus S2. And if we find out S1 minus S2, it is going to give us S1 minus S2 will be equal to U1 minus U2 into T minus half A1 plus A2 into T square. And what is this? This is a quadratic equation in terms of T. So if I write this and I change this a little bit, it is going to become A1 plus A2 into T square minus 2U1 minus U2 into T plus D is equal to 0. So for S1 minus S2, I have substituted D. Correct? Now this is a quadratic equation. Now listen to this logic very carefully. Listen to this logic very carefully. Let's say I am saying that the collision happens. What does it mean? It means that both the cars are going to be at the same position at the same time. Do you agree to that or not? I am saying that let's say the collision happens. Okay. Sarla, we have just subtracted the equations and we have formed the quadratic equation in terms of t. That's all we have done. Okay, we have subtracted the equations. So S1 minus S2 kitna ho jayega? D ho jayega. That's what we are doing. Okay, that's all we are doing. Okay. Now let's say, let's say we are saying that let collision happen. Let collision happen. Now if collision happens, then at the same time, they'll be at the same position. Which means that this equation will be satisfied. For some value of time, this equal equation will be satisfied. Which means... There is going to be a real value of t. Okay, real value matlab numbers ke se bol rahe hai, real and imaginary. There is going to be a real value of t. Okay, which means that the discriminant will have to be equal to or greater than 0. Only then you get real roots. Is that correct? Okay, the discriminant, the other discriminant b square minus 4ac. If collision happens, then the discriminant should be greater than 0. Then we are going to get real roots. Okay, then we are going to get real roots. Is that correct? Okay, but what are, do we want? We don't want the collision to happen. Do we want the collision to happen? No, Baba, we don't. Why would we want someone to get hurt? Okay, we don't want the collision to happen. So what do we want? We want that this equation should not give us a real root. In that case, what should be the condition? Then D should be less than zero. I baat samaj mein. We don't want a real root of this equation. We don't want the collision to happen. So we want the discriminant to be less than 0. And what is discriminant? B square minus 4ac. So that is going to become 4 into u1 minus u2 into square square minus 4d into a1 plus a2. This should be less than 0. Is that correct? Okay. So this 4 and this 4 is gone. And what do we get? We get d should be greater than u1 minus u2 ka square divided by a1 plus a2. Is that correct? Is it clear? Or maybe I missed 2d here. Okay, I missed a 2 over here. This is going to be 2d. Very sorry about that. So this is going to be 8. Oh, ho, ho. Okay, so this is going to be 2 over here. Okay, so when I cross multiplied, I miss this too. Okay, I'm putting that back. So what do we see? We see that D should be greater than U1 minus U2 ka square divided by 2 into A1 plus A2. Is this clear? Is this absolutely clear? What do we want? We don't want the collision to happen. So we don't want a real value of time. So the discriminant should be less than 0. So what will be the minimum distance? The minimum distance should be U1 minus U2 square divided by 2 A1 plus A2. So this we have solved using the ground frame. Correct? Shalom. Samaj complexity? Is question ko solve karne ki complexity samaj mein aai? 
पहले दो इक्वेशन लिखो उसको सब्ट्रैक्ट करो क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन बनाओ क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन के रूट को इमेजिनरी कंसिडर करो ओके यू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ द कैलकुलेशन इन्वॉल्व यू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ द प्रोसेस इन्वॉल्व नाउ जस्ट थिंक ऑफ इट फ्रॉम रिलेटिव फ्रेम ठीक है अब रिलेटिव मोशन से सॉल्व करेंगे एंड विल सी दैट आंसर ऐसे आएगा ऐसे ठीक है विल सी आंसर कितना जल्दी आ जाता है थिंक अबाउट इट ठीक है सेम सिचुएशन ओके नाउ दिस इज फ्रॉम द ग्राउंड फ्रेम दिस सिचुएशन इज फ्रॉम द ग्राउंड फ्रेम नाउ दिस सिचुएशन द सेम सिचुएशन आई एम ऑब्जर्विंग फ्रॉम सम अदर फ्रेम लेट से आई एम गोइंग इन टू फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस ऑफ कार टू ओके सो वॉट आई एम डूइंग इज आई एम पुटिंग अ कैमरा ठीक है वॉट आई एम डूइंग इज आई एम पुटिंग अ कैमरा ऑन कार टू आरी बात समझ में आई एम पुटिंग अ कैमरा ऑन कार टू एंड आई एम गोइंग टू ऑब्जर्व द मोशन फ्रॉम दिस कैमरा or you can say that somewhere is sitting in car 2 and that person is observing car 1 theek hai ya to camera fit kar do car 2 pe ya to kisi koi baitha hua hai car 2 mein aur wo usko dekh raha hai now if there is a camera fit camera se kya dikhega what will the camera see will the camera see car 2 moving obviously not the camera is attached to car 2 will the camera see the car 2 moving no with respect to the camera car 2 is not going to move okay so what the car 2 is going to see or what the camera is going to see is that this car 1 was at a distance d and this car 1 is going to cover a distance d correct camera ko kya motion dikhega camera ko sirf car 1 ka motion dikhega it will just see that car 1 is at a distance d and it has come so close almost it is going to hit car 2 is that correct ठीक है, बट वेन एवर वी आर ऑब्जर्विंग फ्रॉम सम अदर फ्रेम वी हैव टू डू सम वर्क ओके वील हैव टू रिकैलिब्रेट एवरीथिंग वील हैव टू फाइंड आउट एवरीथिंग विद रिस्पेक्ट टू फ्रेम टू ठीक है सो लेट्स डू दैट सो आई वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट वॉट इज द इनिशियल वेलॉसिटी ऑफ वन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टू वॉट इज दैट गोइंग टू बी दैट इज गोइंग टू बी यू वन माइनस यू टू डू अग्री What is the initial velocity of car two with respect to one? That is u one minus u two. Now remember that both of these quantities are in the same direction, which I have taken as positive. इसीलिए I have substituted plus u one minus plus u two. ये याद रखना. I am substituting with sign. So velocity of one with respect to two is velocity of one minus velocity of two. लेकिन दोनों साइन के साथ मैंने डाला है करेक्ट नो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ वन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टू नो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ वन व्हाट इज द एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ वन इट इज ए वन बट लुक एट द डायरेक्शन इट इज नेगेटिव सो आई विल हैव टू सब्सटीट्यूट माइनस ए वन आ रही बात समझ में यहीं पर अक्सर लोग गलती करते हैं दिस इज वेयर पीपल मेक मिस्टेक साइन कन्वेंशन ठीक से नहीं देखते हैं सो वॉट इज दिस दिस इज गोइंग टू बी माइनस ए so this is the acceleration of 1 minus the acceleration of 2 now acceleration of 2 is in the positive direction so i'm going to substitute plus a2 so this is going to become minus of a1 plus a2 and what is the relative displacement think about the relative displacement where was car 1 car 1 was over here where has it reached car 1 has reached over here how much is the relative displacement the relative displacement is d the relative displacement is d and look at the direction of d also car has moved in the forward direction hasn't it if we are observing from the camera car 1 has moved in the forward direction or the positive direction that is why i have substituted plus t do you agree with this or not is this absolutely clear or not the relative parameters so understand one thing if two particles are going to collide if two particles are going to be at the same position in that case what is the relative displacement the relative displacement is the initial separation between the two are you understanding me note this down if two particles are going to collide if two particles are going to collide the relative displacement is equal to the initial separation between the two that is what is happening what is the initial separation d and two is going to observe this motion from camera on 2 this is the motion that is going to be observed okay so what is the relative displacement it is the initial displacement the initial separation between the two clear 
So I have found out what is U12, what is A12, what is S12. Now in this situation, tell me what should be V12. Now in this situation, tell me what should be V12. Quickly guys, this is the most important thing. What should be the velocity of 1 with respect to 2 in order to avoid collision? What should the camera see? What should the camera see? Quickly tell me, imagine that. Manab is saying V1 minus V2. Aray Bapa, ye to, haan, that is correct, V1 minus V2. But how much should that be equal to? V12 means V1 minus V2, obviously. But how much is it going to be? Take a hint. Is it going to be zero or non-zero? Think about it from the camera. So you are sitting in car to visualize this. It is very easy to visualize. It is very easy to visualize. You are sitting in car 2 or there is a camera attached to car 2. Observe from car 2. If collision has to be avoided, what should be the velocity of 1 with respect to 2? Think about it. Car 2 is not moving. If you are looking at it from the camera, if you are looking at it from the camera, car 2 is not moving. Can you see that? Car 2 is not moving. So if car 1 is only moving and it doesn't have to hit car 2 then car 1 has to stop isn't that correct so velocity of 1 with respect to 2 should become 0 yes sir la very good velocity of 1 with respect to 2 should become 0 or aise bhi socho na if collision has to be avoided then both have to move with the same velocity if collision has to be avoided, both have to be moving with the same velocity. Matlab, their velocity, relative velocity will become 0. Is that correct? Okay. So what will be the velocity of 1 with respect to 2? Car 2 should see that car 1 has come and stopped. Car 2 should see that. I'm not talking about someone from the ground frame. I'm talking about someone sitting in car 2. Someone sitting in car 2 should see that car 1 has come and stopped. Okay, so what will be the velocity of 1 with respect to 2? It is going to be 0. Ab kuch bachai nahi karne ko. Now it's very simple. What are we going to apply? We are going to say that V12 square should be equal to U12 square plus 2A12 into S12. Can I say that? I am writing V square is equal to U square plus 2AS in what? In the relative frame. Okay? So this is what I am going to write in the relative frame. So what is this going to become? So this is V12 square is equal to U12 square plus 2A1 plus, sorry, 2A12 into S12. So what is V12? V12 is 0, so this becomes 0. U12 is U1 minus U2, so uska square plus 2 into what is A12? It is minus A1 plus A2. It is minus A1 plus A2, so this becomes minus 2A1 plus a2 and what is s12 s12 is d so what is this going to be equal to d will be equal to u1 minus u2 ka square divided by 2 a1 plus a2 correct sarla is asking why are we taking this formula socho sarla think about it what are the things that we have we have the final velocity we have the initial velocity we have the acceleration and we have the displacement so logically speaking, which formula connects all these four things? Yeah, dekho na, what are the things that we know? Do we know time? No, we don't know time. We don't know time. What are the things we know? We know what is the initial relative velocity. We know what is the relative acceleration. We know what is the relative displacement. We know what is the final relative velocity. So logically saying, which formula connects all these four things? V square is equal to U square plus 2S. That is why we are using this formula. Is that correct? Okay? So D ka value kya jata hai? Ye jata hai. This means that if D has this value, the car is just going to reach car 2. Car 1 is just going to reach car 2. Is ka matlab kya hai? If D is smaller, kya hoga? Collision ho jayega. And if D is larger, kya hoga? Collision nahi hoga. So we can say that this is the limiting condition. So if D has this value, the car 1 is just going to reach car 2. 
if this is greater than this distance if d is greater than this distance in that case what will happen no collision is going to occur and if d is smaller than this distance collision is going to occur is that correct okay so you see that when we are solving it from the relative frame of reference it is so easy to solve write one equation and you are done you don't have to create a quadratic equation and you don't have to make discriminant greater than zero or less than zero so relative motion say you can solve things faster but the catch is that you should be able to visualize if you are able to visualize it is going to become very simple is that correct okay so is this clear is the relative motion method better okay if you find that relative motion method is better and you are going to use it going forward then give me a yes give me a thumbs up right now excellent okay all good all clear chalo if everything is clear quickly give me a thumbs up and then we move forward chalo there is a level up question but darna nahi hai if you have a level up question we are not going to get scared what are we going to say we are going to say aan do dekh lenge theek hai we are not going to get afraid with any difficult question that comes our way theek hai we are going to face it we are going to solve it what is the worst that is going to happen we are not going to be able we will not be able to solve it but we are going to learn something from it right to so level up question aaya to kya bolna hai aan do write it down level up question hai kya karna hai aan do chalo guys i am not going to solve it for you quickly take a screenshot or note this down and this is going to be your homework i am going to give you homework theek hai and i am going to come again at what time i am going to come at 5 o'clock again when i'm going to come at 5 o'clock okay 5 o'clock pe we are going to discuss these homeworks because i don't want to directly give you the solution i want you to think about these things i want you to at least attempt so you have time till 5 o'clock so uh, take a screenshot okay and then try to solve it and then we are going to discuss it at 5 o'clock today today itself okay so you have some time to attempt these questions these are very good questions okay this is from irodov बट डरना नहीं है एरोडो का नाम सुन के पसीना नहीं आना चाहिए अब यू शुड बी एबल टू सॉल्व दिस ठीक है ट्राई करना है घबराना नहीं है ट्राई करना है ठीक है नोटेड नोटेड चलो एंड देन देर इज अनदर क्वेश्चन आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू ठीक है दिस इज ऑल्सो फ्रॉम इरोडो ये भी इसका भी फटाफट स्क्रीन ले लो टेक अ स्क्रीन और नोट इट डाउन ठीक है You are going to take it, or you will have this recorded. So note the timestamp. So if you go to the the timestamp at that particular instant, you will find this question. This is also your homework. This is again a question from Irudo, and we are going to discuss it today at five o'clock. Okay? Correct? Ha. T N. Attempt it. Attempt it after the session, and we are going to discuss it today at five o'clock. Okay? And if you are able to solve it, post the answer in the comments. I'll check. Okay? Chalo. Now what will happen in relative motion in 2D? The same thing. Nothing is going to change. So all we are going to do is we are going to break all the motions in two perpendicular components, and we are going to use relative motion equations to solve it in both the components separately. So x alag solve karna hai, y alag solve karna hai, and that's how we are going to deal with relative motion in 2D. Nothing different. The logic fundamentally remains the same. Okay. So we are going to start off with a very good question. What is the question? This is the question, and this is a question from IIT JEE 2011. IIT में आ चुका है ये question. All right, so let's look at this question. A train is moving along a straight line with a constant acceleration. A boy standing inside the train throws a ball in forward direction with a speed of 10 meter per second at an angle of 60 degree to the horizontal. And the most important statement. With respect to himself, this is the most important statement. Okay, the boy has to move forward by 1.15 meter inside the train to catch the ball back to the initial height. The acceleration of the train in meter per second square is. Is the question clear? Par lo question, dek lo question. If you have any doubt in the question, ask me. But is the question clear? Read this question very carefully. and try to understand what we need to try and understand is that all these parameters that are given acceleration ho gaya velocity ho gaya displacement ho gaya what is it with respect to that's the most important thing to understand 
वॉट इज इट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू ठीक है स्टार्ट करें चलो सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग हियर इज and the question is going to give us the hint what should we do the question itself is going to give us a hint okay let's talk about the velocity let's talk about the initial velocity the initial velocity is 10 meter per second at an angle of 60 degree to the horizontal with respect to himself matlab what is this velocity with respect to tell me is this velocity with respect to the ground or is this velocity with respect to the train tell me tell me quickly guys this is the most important thing figuring out what is with respect to what if we know what is with respect to what we can solve everything but the language can sometimes be tricky and it may happen that sometimes we don't understand the language so it's very important to understand how it is written correct to mere ko batao that this velocity of 10 meter per second at an angle of 60 degree is it with respect to the train or is it with respect to the ground quickly guys chalo batao with respect to train or with respect to ground chalo fatafat batao with respect to train or with respect to ground theek hai the hint is in the question itself क्या हो रहा है अ बॉय इज स्टैंडिंग इन साइड द ट्रेन ही इज नॉट मूविंग इन साइड द ट्रेन ही इज स्टैंडिंग इन साइड द ट्रेन सो द बॉय इज नॉट मूविंग विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ट्रेन इज दैट करेक्ट द वेलॉसिटी ऑफ द बॉय एंड द वेलॉसिटी ऑफ द ट्रेन इज सेम वेन ही इज थ्रोइंग इट ठीक है एंड वेन ही हैज थ्रोन इट एट सम वेलॉसिटी वेन ही हैज थ्रोन इट विद सम वेलॉसिटी ही हैज थ्रोन इट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू हिमसेल्फ and he is not moving with respect to the train initially baad mein wo move karta hai initially he is not moving he is throwing it with respect to himself and himself is the same as with respect to the train so this velocity is with respect to the train is that correct the velocity of the what is it the ball with respect to train is 10 meter per second at an angle of 60 degree is that correct Now tell me what is the displacement? So the boy has to move 1.15 meter to catch it. What is this? Is this displacement with respect to the train or is it displacement with respect to the ground? Yes, Jepelin is absolutely right. Sarla is absolutely right. Train the uh, the velocity is with respect to the train. Now tell me what is the displacement with respect to? The boy has to move forward 1.15 meter. in the train to catch the ball what is the velocity with respect to i'm sorry what is the displacement with respect to is it with respect to the train or is it with respect to the ground quickly guys chalo fatafat batao the boy has to move forward by 1.15 meter inside the train to catch the ball ठीक है मतलब ये किसके रिस्पेक्ट में दिया हुआ है ऑब्वियसली दिस इज आल्सो विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ट्रेन सो द डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द बॉल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ट्रेन इज हाउ मच इट इज 1.15 मीटर आई बात समझ में सो द वेलोसिटी इनिशियल वेलोसिटी इज गिवन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ट्रेन इटसेल्फ एंड द डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज गिवन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ट्रेन इटसेल्फ सो इट विल बी अ वेरी गुड आइडिया टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम द फ्रेम ऑफ ट्रेन डू यू अग्री विद मी और नॉट सो लेट्स से द ट्रेन हैज एन एक्सेलरेशन ए ठीक है, the train has an acceleration a. कहां से ground से, ground से if you look at the train, you will see that the train has an acceleration of a. ठीक है, so what we are going to do is we are going to put a camera. ठीक है, I don't know how to draw a camera. चलो, what I am going to do is I am going to put a camera on the train, and I am going to observe the motion from the train. So everything I am writing, I am going to write it from the frame of reference of the train. Is that correct? So from the frame of reference of the train. What is the velocity? The velocity is 10 meter per second at an angle of 60 degree. It is already with respect to the train. Problem solved. This velocity is already with respect to the train, so I don't need to do anything. Okay. What is this displacement with respect to the train? This displacement or the range of the projectile. It is basically the range of the projectile. The range of the of the projectile is 1.15 meter with respect to the train. Already given. So this is already 1.15 meter. Now tell me about the acceleration. Can you tell me about the acceleration? ठीक है. So obviously we are going to break it in the x and y direction. 
एक्सलरेशन मुझे एक्स डायरेक्शन में भी चाहिए और वाई डायरेक्शन में भी चाहिए एंड किसके रिस्पेक्ट में चाहिए आई नीड इट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ट्रेन सो यू टेल मी द एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ द बॉल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ट्रेन एंड उसका एक्स कॉम्पोनेंट एंड यू टेल मी द एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ द बॉल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ट्रेन उसका वाई कॉम्पोनेंट कैन यू टेल मी बोथ ऑफ दीज थिंग्स सही से बताना विथ साइन विथ द करेक्ट डायरेक्शन आई वॉन्ट दीज टू क्वांटिटीज विद द करेक्ट डायरेक्शन क्विकली टेल मी गाइज आई वॉन्ट द एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ द बॉल आई ऑलरेडी नो वट इज द वेलॉसिटी आई ऑलरेडी नो वट इज द डिस्प्लेसमेंट I need the acceleration with respect to the train in the x direction. I need the acceleration with respect to the train in the y direction. If I know these two things, I can write everything. I can find everything. Chalo, can you tell me? Can you tell me? Think about it. Think about it. acceleration of the ball with respect to the train along the x axis acceleration of the ball with respect to the train along the y axis okay let's start first of all the acceleration of the ball with respect to the train along y axis is going to be the acceleration of the ball along y axis minus the acceleration of the train along y axis correct okay think about it the ball is in air it is projectile motion it is projectile motion okay so what will be the acceleration of the ball the acceleration of the ball is going to be g downwards is that correct so i'm going to write it as minus g the acceleration of the ball with respect to the acceleration of the ball with respect to ground is what it is g downwards so i'm writing minus g what is the acceleration of the train in the y direction the train is accelerating horizontally the train is moving horizontally so the acceleration of the train is zero in the y direction okay so the acceleration of the ball with respect to the train is minus g in the y direction ai baat samajh mein so this g is in the y direction obviously downwards with respect to the frame of reference also with respect to the train also correct now let's talk about the acceleration of ball with respect to train in the x component so that is going to be the acceleration of ball in the x component minus the acceleration of train in the x component what is the acceleration of the ball in the x component the ball is a projectile motion it has no acceleration in the horizontal direction ठीक है, so with respect to the ground, the acceleration of the ball in the x direction is going to be zero, correct? है कि नहीं? Minus what is the acceleration of the train in the x direction? It is a, and किस direction में है? Positive x-axis में है, so I will substitute plus a. So the acceleration of the train, sorry, the acceleration of the ball with respect to the train in the x direction is minus a. यानी कि कैसा यानी कि ऐसा नाउ वी हैव फिगर्ड आउट एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम द फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस ऑफ द ट्रेन सो फ्रॉम द फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस ऑफ द ट्रेन दिस पार्टिकल हैज अ वेलोसिटी ऑफ 10 मीटर पर सेकेंड एट एन एंगल ऑफ 60 डिग्री इट हैज एन एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ जी इन द डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन एंड इट हैज एन एक्सेलरेशन ए इन द बैकवर्ड डायरेक्शन सो आई हैव फिगर्ड आउट एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम द फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस ऑफ द ट्रेन इज दैट करेक्ट इज दिस क्लियर This is the crucial step. After this, it is just motion in 2D. Correct? Do you agree, guys? Is this clear? Okay. So now we can quickly solve this. Now we can quickly solve this. Chalo. So what is the situation? With respect to the camera we have attached over here. Okay. This has an acceleration of g like this. This has an acceleration of a like this. Now we are writing this equation with respect to the train. Everything with respect to the train. ठीक है तो इधर कितना हो जाएगा इधर हो जाएगा टेन कॉस सिक्सटी डिग्री और इधर हो जाएगा टेन साइन सिक्सटी डिग्री ओके द फर्स्ट थिंग इज द टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट डिपेंड्स ऑन व्हाट द टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट ओनली डिपेंड्स ऑन द वाई कंपोनेंट इज दैट करेक्ट टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट ओनली डिपेंड्स ऑन द वाई कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ विलॉसिटी एंड एक्सेलरेशन सो टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट इज गोइंग टू बी टू 
इंटू टेन साइन सिक्सटी डिग्री डिवाइडेड बाई वॉट डिवाइडेड बाई जी टू यू वाई डिवाइडेड बाई जी वाई ठीक है टू यू साइन थीटा डिवाइडेड बाई जी दैट ऑल आई है सो दैट इज गोइंग टू बी द टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट सो दिस टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट इज गोइंग टू बी टू इंटू टेन डिवाइडेड बाई टेन इंटू साइन सिक्सटी डिग्री इज रूट थ्री बाई टू सो दिस टू दिस टू दिस टेन दिस टेन इज गॉन सो द टाइम इज गोइंग टू बी रूट थ्री सेकेंड सो द टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट इज रूट थ्री सेकेंड करेक्ट ओके नाउ लाइट लेट्स राइट द इक्वेशन फॉर द डिस्प्लेसमेंट पप्पू इज आस्किंग सर साइन सिक्सटी डिग्री वाई सर दिया हुआ है ना सिक्सटी डिग्री विद द हॉरिजोंटल सो कॉस सिक्सटी डिग्री एंड साइन सिक्सटी डिग्री क्या होता है टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट टू यू साइन थीटा डिवाइडेड बाई जी दैट्स वॉट आई डन टू यू साइन थीटा डिवाइडेड बाई जी या फिर यू कैन राइट द टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट एज टू यू वाई डिवाइडेड बाई जी वाई करेक्ट दैट्स इट ठीक है नाउ वी कैन राइट द डिस्प्लेसमेंट इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन द डिस्प्लेसमेंट इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन इज हाउ मच इट इज वन पॉइंट वन फाइव मीटर एंड इट वॉट डायरेक्शन इन द फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन सो आई एम बेसिकली राइटिंग एक्स इज इक्वल टू एक्स इज इक्वल टू यू एक्स टी प्लस हाफ ए एक्स टी स्क्वेर आई एम राइटिंग दिस इक्वेशन ठीक है सो एक्स कितना है वन पॉइंट वन फाइव मीटर इन द फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन है कि नहीं इन द फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन दैट इज वाई आई एम राइटिंग प्लस वन पॉइंट वन फाइव वॉट इज यू एक्स यू एक्स इज गोइंग टू बी टेन कॉस सिक्सटी डिग्री वॉट इज टी टी इज रूट थ्री प्लस हाफ इन टू एक्सलरेशन अब एक्सलरेशन देखो एक्सलरेशन इज इन दी ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन सो आई हैव टू सब्सिट्यूट माइनस ए आई हैड अज्यूम्ड ए एज द एक्सलरेशन ऑफ द ट्रेन बट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस इन विच वी आर द एक्सलरेशन इज इन द ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन दैट इज आई एम सब्सिट्यूटिंग माइनस ए सो माइनस ए मल्टीप्लाइड बाई रूट थ्री का स्क्वेयर विच इज गोइंग टू बी थ्री ठीक है सो वॉट इज दिस गोइंग टू गिव दिस इज गोइंग टू बिकम वन पॉइंट वन फाइव इज इक्वल टू कॉस सिक्सटी डिग्री इज हाफ सो मल्टीप्लाइड बाई रूट थ्री प्लस यहां माइनस आ जाएगा माइनस थ्री ए बाई टू तो यहां से क्या आ जाएगा लेट्स क्विकली सॉल्व दिस 2.3, so 3a is going to be 10 root 3 minus how much minus 2.3, and what is root 3? Root 3 is 1.73. ठीक है? तो यहाँ से क्या आ जाएगा? Let's take the calculation over here. थोड़ा सा space cramp हो गया है, कोई बात नहीं. So 3a will be equal to 10 root 3 is how much? 10 into 1.73. 10 into 1.73, so 17.3 minus 2.3, so a will be equal to 5 meter per second square, and that is going to be our answer. Clear? Can you see this? Done? All good? So acceleration is going to be 5 meter per second square. All right? Chalo. Now I'm going to do just one more concept. This is the last concept, and then we are going to wind up. Okay? Relative motion for projectile. So projectile के लिए एक बड़ी interesting चीज होती है. ठीक है? If we have two projectiles, something very interesting happens. So let's say it has a velocity u a, angle theta a. It has velocity u b, angle theta b. So if we observe one with respect to the other. So velocity of a क्या हो जाएगा u a cos theta a i cap plus u a sin theta a j cap and similarly you will have the velocity for b. Now the sir the diagram में कुछ नहीं है. There is one projectile it has velocity u a and angle theta a and there is another velocity another projectile with velocity u b and angle theta b. That's it. ठीक है. Now they'll have their respectively velocities in the x and y direction. But what about the acceleration? Now the acceleration of a is going to be minus g, correct? Because this is projectile motion, this is motion under gravity. So acceleration of a is going to be minus g, and acceleration of b is also going to be minus g. So what will be the acceleration of a with respect to b? Can you tell me what will be the acceleration of a with respect to the b? Of uh, with respect to b. Now acceleration of a is also minus g. Acceleration of b is also minus g. Both have the same acceleration. So what is the relative acceleration? The relative acceleration is going to be zero, and this makes our life very simple. 
this can help us solve the question in so such a small time if you compare it with the ground frame okay this is a very important concept and i'm going to show problems on that yes sir like you're absolutely right the acceleration of a with respect to b is going to become zero to chalo let's see if you can solve this question yes jepolin you are absolutely right let's try to solve this question now two particles are projected simultaneously in the vertical plane from the same point the point of projection is the same but with different speeds and different angles to the horizontal the path followed by one as seen by the other till both are in air is option a a vertical straight line option b a straight line making a constant angle with the horizontal option c a parabola option d a hyperbola chalo batao i'm going to wait for the answer and i've already give you given you the hint you already have the hint chalo quickly guys it's a very simple question very simple question i'm going to wait for your answer sudha is saying c a parabola the acceleration of one with respect to the other is what it is zero because both of them are in air both have the same acceleration so acceleration of one particle as seen by the other is going to be what it is going to be zero and if acceleration is zero what kind of motion is seen think about it think about it if the acceleration is zero what kind of motion is seen do we see a parabola parabola kab dikhta hai apne ko when we observe it from the ground frame right when we observe a particle from a ground frame then it has an acceleration right when we observe a particle when we observe a projectile from a ground frame it has an acceleration and because of this acceleration we see a parabola because there is acceleration but if one particle is seen with respect to the other particle what do we have the acceleration of one particle with respect to the other is zero in that case what happens there is no acceleration if there is no acceleration what will be the motion the velocity is going to become constant and if the velocity becomes constant is it going to change its direction it is not going to change its direction okay if a particle is moving with constant velocity how are we going to see the path the path is going to be a straight line do you agree now the question is is it going to be a vertical straight line or a straight line with a different angle theek hai yes k sangakara is absolutely right jepolin why why a why option a why a vertical straight line why a vertical straight line now think about it think about it okay now this is relative what we are doing is observing one with respect to two what are we doing we are observing one with respect to two ha huh? now you guys have got it absolutely right now we are observing one with respect to two okay so in that case what is going to happen what is the velocity relative velocity in the x direction i'm writing everything relative here पहले ही मैं डिस्क्लेमर दे दे रहा हूं एवरीथिंग रिलेटिव ईयर नाउ द वेलोसिटी रिलेटिव वेलोसिटी इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन इज गोइंग टू बी व्हाट इट इज गोइंग टू बी यू वन कॉस थीटा वन माइनस यू टू कॉस थीटा टू वेलोसिटी ऑफ वन इज यू वन कॉस थीटा वन इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन वेलोसिटी ऑफ टू इज यू टू कॉस थीटा टू इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन सो यू इज गोइंग टू बी यू वन कॉस थीटा वन माइनस यू टू कॉस थीटा टू सिमिलरली यू वाई इज गोइंग टू बी वॉट it is going to be u1 sin theta 1 minus u2 sin theta 1 and what is the acceleration the acceleration in the x direction as well as the y direction is going to be zero i'm obviously talking about the relative acceleration the acceleration the relative acceleration both in the x direction and y direction is going to be zero which means what can we say that the relative displacement is going to be ux into t 
so that is going to be u1 cos theta 1 minus u2 cos theta 2 multiplied by t and what will be the relative displacement in the y direction it is going to be u y into t there is no acceleration so this is going to be u1 sin theta 1 minus u2 sin theta 2 multiplied by t and what is the trajectory of motion the trajectory of motion is y with respect to x so if we divide the equation we are going to get y is equal to u1 sin theta 1 minus u2 sin theta 2 divided by u1 cos theta 1 minus u2 cos theta 2 multiplied by x what kind of equation is it this is an equation y is equal to mx is that correct isn't this the equation y is equal to mx so what will be the motion like if we observe one with respect to two we are going to see a straight line passing through a region and what is this this is going to have a constant slope is the slope infinite we cannot say okay they are thrown with different velocities and they are thrown with different angles so u1 cos theta 1 and u2 cos theta 2 they are equal or not we cannot say so we cannot say it is going to be a straight line for a straight line the slope has to be infinite the angle is should be 90 degree the slope has to be infinite but it is thrown with different velocity and different angles so we cannot say that the denominator is zero so what is going to be answer one it is going to be a straight line and that was obvious from the start if there is no acceleration the trajectory of the particle is going to be a straight line so that was very obvious from the start itself so we didn't even have to solve this much and what is the slope the slope is a constant okay the slope is a constant so what will be our answer our answer obviously is going to be a straight line making a constant angle with the horizontal is that correct not necessarily a vertical straight line is that clear done sorted clear quickly give me a thumbs up if this is clear Chalo. so let's solve another question very similar question and now i want you to give the answer in 10 seconds okay two particles are projected simultaneously in the same vertical plane from the same point but with different speeds u1 and u2 making different angles theta 1 and theta 2 but is given to us that u1 cos theta 1 is equal to u2 cos theta 2 now the path followed by one as seen by the other till both are in air is a horizontal straight line a vertical straight line a parabola a straight line making an angle theta 1 minus theta 2 with the horizontal Chalo, come on guys give me the answer in 10 seconds i'm waiting for your answer 10 seconds mein iska answer aa jana chahiye now that you have understood everything option b sangakara is saying option b what about other people what will be the answer Now we have already solved this, haven't we? We have already solved this. Now the situation is absolutely the same. What is given to us that the horizontal velocities are same. U1 cos theta 1 is equal to U2 cos theta 2, which means the horizontal velocities are the same, which means the denominator is going to become what? The denominator is going to become zero, which means the slope is going to become infinite. If the slope is becoming infinite, what does it mean? It basically means that it is going to be a straight line which is parallel to the y-axis is that correct it is simply going to be a straight line which is going to be a parallel to the y-axis so a vertical straight line option b is going to be the right option is that correct okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you this homework okay this is on the same concept this question has come in j main okay it's a good question and i want you to solve this as a homework Okay, this question came in J main. I don't remember which year, but this is a question from J main. It is on the same concept. Okay, thoda sa zada complicated hai, but the concept is exactly the same. Now, this is also your, your homework. Take a screenshot or note it down and we are going to discuss it at 5 o'clock. Okay, so guys, I'm going to wrap up over here and we are going to meet again at 5 o'clock. 
you have to come prepared with your homework and we are going to solve some very good questions some very good questions advanced level questions questions from erodov and other books which are excellent questions uh, we are going to solve at five o'clock today itself okay on the same topic on the same topic relative motion so i want you guys to attempt everything that i have given to you do your homework and come at five o'clock as well all right we're going to have a blast at five o'clock because they're going to be very very good questions okay so if you like this session if you enjoyed what you learned do give us a thumbs up do give us a like okay subscribe to the channel and keep watching all the videos in sequence because this is a class format okay and do give us a like if you like what we are doing if you are benefiting from it uh, that is going to be boosting our morale that is going to be helping us that is going to be encouraging us okay so give us a like give us a thumbs up give us uh, more sharing okay give us more love and do subscribe to the channel and see you today at 5 o'clock all right so that's it till then Keep practicing, keep getting better and remember you guys are rankers. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon.